Hey guys, so I believe I mentioned in a previous video that I was going to ditch my beloved Linux Mint distribution in favor of its parent distribution Ubuntu and I have done just that. So today I'm going to be talking about some of my first impressions with Ubuntu. I guess first impressions is not entirely true because I have used Ubuntu before and of course Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu so I do have some familiarity with it but it's been a while since I picked up Unity so I think a lot of what I'm going to be talking about today is going to be Unity focused. So uh, to begin with, the things that I do like about it. Well, the initial reason why I switched to Ubuntu still stands. I needed something that is easy to upgrade because I do have a mission critical machine, but I do really require uh, up to date software and Ubuntu does seem to match both of these quite well. It is easy to update and it has reasonably up to date software. It also um, you know, you can get PPA repositories, which you can also get on Mint as well. But then there's uh, dependency issues and so forth. So without going into too many details, uh, Ubuntu is just the more upgradable system. Also, one thing I did notice is that, I mean, nowadays it, it contains the same codecs and you can essentially do the same kind of multimedia things from a licensing and proprietary standpoint on Ubuntu as you can on Linux Mint. In fact, you can really do more from what I've discovered. Now, there's nothing to say that you can't um, jury rig or change your version of Linux Mint so that you can do anything which I'm about to talk about here. But I'm really looking for something straightforward and something that functions within, shall we say, the user's manual. I don't want to have to break a system or change it too much to get it to do what I want because I still need it to be stable at the end of the day. That's why I didn't try and upgrade Linux Mint because it says that's not a stable way to do it. Ubuntu says you can upgrade this way using, I think it's uh, Aptitude or AppGet or whatever, and it is a recommended and it is a, a reasonably safe and stable way. Um... But I did notice with the Ubuntu store is that they are shifting towards a lot more choice in terms of uh, the nature of the software included. They've got a lot of open source stuff there as well, but they've also got a lot of um, sort of proprietary stuff there. They've got a lot of stuff that you can pay for as well. And I really like the idea of embracing different business models for software. I like open source as much as the next person. Some of the best projects on the internet are open source. Wikipedia, like WordPress as, you know, the, uh, as, as the platform itself. And the Linux kernel is amazing. But um, that's not to say that open source is suitable for everything. And, um, and it's not. And there are some times when... Uh, you want to allow people, allow software developers. Developers are very hard-working people. And uh, in the open source world, they put a lot of work into uh, a project which um, they don't really get the thanks that they deserve. And, um, and and it would be nice if like small-time developers could actually earn money from all of this contribution. Um, because it, I think that it will make the community stronger. And I think that um, small software developers who have a greater relationship with their consumer than perhaps the uh, the bigger guys, you know, there's a lot to benefit there. And I think that Ubuntu could be the platform where that happens. Um, and I also kind of get this vibe that Ubuntu almost wants to be Android for the PC. And I don't entirely think that's a bad thing either. Because I have Android on my tablet device, I have no intention of uh, switching it out for um, a Linux distribution. I don't even root it because, uh, you know, I like the security that it offers. Uh, Android is a fantastic operating system for a tablet, for a phone. And um, some of the benefits of Android, like the way that the App Store works and, uh, and so forth, are carried across uh, to Ubuntu. And um, Ubuntu really does kind of feel like that. So I, I consider that to be a plus. Um, some other things that I do like about uh, Ubuntu, well, let's get on to Unity, because Unity is probably the most contentious point about Ubuntu. It's caused a lot of people to switch to uh, Ubuntu sister distributions like Kubuntu, Zubuntu, Lubuntu, all with different desktop environments that we've even seen a spin-off GNOME, uh, GNOME, GNOME Ubuntu. I can't remember what they've called that now. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's Ubuntu with GNOME as the default desktop environment. And, um... And it's caused a lot of people to, you know, Unity has caused a lot of people to jump ship to different distributions like that. Um, because Unity, well, to begin with, the things that I like about it is that Ubuntu clearly wants to make its way into the mainstream. And I think that it would be nice to see uh, a Linux distribution make, um, you know, a solid appearance on the uh, on the desktop. And, um, and I think 
if Ubuntu is going to be that distribution, and I think that it really is going to be Ubuntu because you need to have a big company like Canical behind you and you need to have like a business vision. I don't think community projects are going to make it into the big time in the, you know, in the same way that a, a corporate project will do. You need to have that cash incentive. You need to have hired staff. You know, you need to have a, an investment, a lot of money. So, uh, you know, Canical and Ubuntu are probably the best contenders for it. You might see something from SUSE, you might, well, you won't see anything from Novell. But, um, but Ubuntu clearly wants to make its way onto the consumer market, and I, for one, applaud that. And that's where, like, like, you know, the app store that gives you the choice of, uh, being able to pay for apps, or, uh, or, or take advantage of the open source ones, or, you know, and, 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 and the whole, uh, you know, and, and the, well, the diversification of the community as well. But, um, if, if Ubuntu is going to make it to the mainstream, it, uh, it needs to move away from the command line. Most people are, are, are scared of the command line, really scared of the command line. Um, and it's infuriating to me that whenever I have a problem and someone recommends a fix for it, they say, okay, go to the command line, open up this, type this in. Because as much as it, is in terms of easy to fix and easy to use. First of all, I have, have not learned a thing because someone has just told me to copy and paste something into a terminal. So I don't know, you know, I don't necessarily know what prob, you know, what, how it's fixed the problem. And that's kind of, uh, another problem. Whereas if someone had taught me through a GUI, uh, then I'd at least know, um, you know, I'd know more about the problem and I'd be more on familiar terms of fixing it. And even if I do know about the problem, it, it's not just mainstream. It's it's to me. It's a constant reminder. The the terminal being there is a constant reminder that Linux is, for want of an expression, a, an elite system. Um, and and I want it to be a, a an elite system, and I want it to be a consumer system. I want it to to be more diverse than it already is. And I think you know Ubuntu sees that vision as well, and it's trying to move towards it. And you can see that it's moving towards it because um, there was no immediate um, button or, or you know way to get to the terminal. I actually it took me a, a while to actually you know I had to go through the menus and I had to put a shortcut onto the menu bar. So I like the idea that it's standardizing the GUI interface because I think that's the next big step that Linux needs if it's going to become mainstream. We are starting to see people develop software for it. Uh, Steam is going to make a nice repository for it and uh, you know and and in time games and maybe some other software might be available for for um, uh, for, for Ubuntu especially considering that um, you know a lot of AAA titles have said that they're going to be developing for Steam OS now which is great. So um, with that in mind um, that that's probably all of the good things about it. The good things basically, um, I mean, it looks very polished. I like the software store. I like the ability to buy software, um, and I like that it's it's trying to make itself more mainstream. Some of the things I don't like about it now. Some of them are niggly. Some of them are little. Some of them are like, well, if I wanted to go to my Unity bar, which you know my task bar, uh, on the uh, on the left hand side of the screen, I, I it's um. It's sometimes not responsive. The auto hide isn't really that responsive, and that's kind of frustrating because the auto hide really needs to be good. Because this monitor that you can see here on the left, that's only uh, 10, 24 pixels wide. Um, it's my, is it, you know, it's my second monitor here, and it's the leftmost one. But if I want to open up um, a, uh, you know, a, a, a Chrome uh, browser window or whatever, and I wanted to. Um, to have a look at, uh, you know, to, to, to open up basically any website, Facebook, YouTube, whatever, uh, and, and the, uh, the horizontal space is taken up by the Unity panel, that's a problem. And that's a problem in the sense that, uh, that I have to scroll across horizontally and vertically. Like, there shouldn't really be a panel on the side of the screen. It should be top or bottom, or even both. But, you know, because those are basically the uh, agreed um, parts of the screen that you can start taking up with taskbars and so forth. If you start taking space from the left, then you're going to start messing around with people's experiences of how they use the internet. And considering we're moving more and more onto the cloud and Ubuntu kind of is going to be embracing that, um, it needs to make web surfing as easy and as friendly as possible. And that's certainly not doing it. It expects, that you, it expects you to have a bigger screen than some people actually already have. And especially considering that Ubuntu is likely to be installed on a lot of XP machines now, now that um, the uh, support for them is actually running out. Um, yeah, it's um, it, it's a big problem. So anyway, so I've got it on auto hide, which is like the obvious solution to the problem. But I've had my uh, cursor resting on the uh, on the auto hide part of the bar, and it's not come out. It's it's, it's actually on the highest sensitivity for the, the auto hide on the bar. It's actually on the highest sensitivity, 
but it's not, um, but it's still, it just feels unresponsive. There you go. So, you know, and you have to really sort of push it across the screen. You have to push it so that it's about like an inch or two inches out of the window. Like you have to have like an imaginary extended part of the screen. Um, okay. So anyway, yeah, that, I mean, that, that sounds like a little thing, but it basically sums up Unity. Unresponsive interface, right? Another case, uh, another case in point here. Um, okay, so I've got um, my uh, rubbish bin file manager here. If I wanted to uh, access the file menu, I have to first of all, you know, you have to you have to go all the way up here, right? You have to, you know, the menu kind of appears here, which is like away from the window, out of the window. So that's really quite silly. Now I do understand that Ubuntu uh, is actually going and, and Unity is going to change that in the near future. So I'm not going to hold you know, the, the too much against them for that. But this has gone on for over a year now, uh, maybe even like two years, uh, and they still haven't worked out this menu kerfuffle. That's a, that's that's not a good sign. Because, uh, you know, you can you can have like a little menu, you can have a little window down here. I go, oh, I just need to click file open. Oh, vroom. you have to carry all your mouse halfway across the screen. And I think that's kind of it again in spades, is that it's, you know, unintuitive and it's, and it's unresponsive. Okay, so another case in point, I can't quickly access my um, so so I've got I've got my um, rubbish bin open here. Um, what if I quickly wanted to open a file on uh, on Audacity, which I've got over here? I can't. There there is no way for me to click. Like, I have to select Audacity, then I have to do file open bloody blah, blah blah. And then if I wanted to access the menu from rubbish bin again or the menu from the the file manager, I have to select um, the file manager and then go into the menu. It's that extra click. It's that extra thing that you have to do. It doesn't eliminate the, the number of things you have to do to get a task done. It increases the number of things you have to do. And this also, again, might sound like a, a small criticism. It might sound like a bit, but when you're using it as your main system and day in and day out and day in and day out, you have to put up with this little extra here, this little extra thing here. Okay, so going in that vein of it being a bit counterintuitive and uh, a bit unresponsive to use, uh, let's have a look at the Unity menu because I've kind of found that that's m basically a write-off if I'm completely serious. So we go to Unity menu here. These are my applic well some applications. Right now, presumably these are going to be the most common. No, well, these aren't my commonly most used applications. Uh, you know, Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition isn't the fourth most commonly used program on my computer now um, and certainly not like mini tube or anything like that so uh, two mini tubes don't know what that's doing there so um so it's just given me some programs off off the bat all right well you know let's go to the applications lens i think they call it i know i, I know they have to keep inventing new words for various things nowadays don't they so these are all these are again Recent, oh, recently used. All right, that kind of mm, possibly makes sense. Um, and then it then it then it suggests, oh well, since you're looking for an application, maybe maybe you'd like to buy some things. I don't even know. Is that a song? Is, is that a? Uh, you, you know, like oh well, and and they're all for nothing as well. Oh no, there's there's some things that you have to pay. Yeah. So okay, and again, yeah, okay, right. Here's here. This uh, this this auto hide menu bar thing. I use a trackable mouse because it means that I have more precision and I can operate it faster. It doesn't come with a mouse wheel. Um, it's, you know, it's a preference. Again, so, you know, th this kind of interface expects you to have a mouse wheel. It expects you to have a standard computer setup. When I initially installed Ubuntu, it had two Unity panels. The idea of that is absolutely ludicrous. It doesn't expect you to have two computer screens. It was easy enough to remove but you, it, it was a reminder that, uh, you know, Unity wasn't designed for your kind of computer. It was designed for your standard keyboard, mouse, one screen, you know, anything else, no. You know, any, anything else, it, it, it might work within the confines of Linux and so forth, but um, it, Unity was not designed for it. And it kind of, you know, constantly reminds you. So, um, here we got recently used, installed, very useful. Um, and you can filter your results up here in the top corner, which is great. Okay, uh, I've got fonts, graphics, for example. Okay, yeah. So if I wanted to get to GIMP using only mouse clicks, I would have to go, dude, you know, all the, you know, and that's that's a long distance. And then yeah, or if I wanted to get to say like a game, you know, that's that's you know going from here 
all the way down to here, all the way down across to here. It's not an efficient menu system. Like, the menu system was perfected with Windows 95. It really, really was. LXDE hasn't changed it. LXDE is a much more intuitive system, and I know that it's got the argument, well, it's been around a lot longer, it's a lot easier to use. Okay, that's great. So, um, you know, maybe it's a keyboard driven Well, I mean, it is. It's clearly a keyboard-driven mouse. So if I wanted to search for an op application, Audacity, right? Uh, um, well, I'll do, well, I'll do GIMP. GIMP is easy enough, right? So, okay, right, now I could be searching documents, I could be searching uh, anything like that, right? So I've got GIMP up there now. And I still have to resort to the mouse. I still have to resort to um, clicking the mouse. You know, I still have to resort to uh, to the mouse. So it's not a keyboard-driven menu in the sense, you know, it, you still have to use your mouse to actually finally get there, don't you? You can still maybe select it with your keys, uh, or whatever, but yeah, it's it's um, it's not useful. It's not useful. It's not a use. You know, this is this is a real problem for it. Um, it's that it yeah, it's just not intuitive. Is it a keyboard driven menu? Is it a mouse driven menu? I have used um, op yeah, not operating system. I've used desktop environments that rely entirely on keyboard driven everything. Keyboard driven uh, you know, menus. Keyboard driven. Uh, ways of switching windows, selecting windows, uh, arranging your windows on your screen, and it works. If you're into key, you know, if you're into a key keyboard-based um, layout, then that's great. Um, you know, and, and you're into keyboard-based uh, desktop environments, that's great. If you're into mouse-driven ones, you know, th there are great ones out there as well. LXDE, uh, KDE, uh, XFCE. And I think GNOME, uh, you know, it's been too long since I tried GNOME again, um, so I'm not entirely sure about it. But it's it is it's too counterintuitive. It's counterintuitive and it's slow and it's it, you know it, it it takes longer to do things, more effort to do things that you don't require effort to do. It's just generally quite inefficient. Um, and again, you can't switch easily uh, easily between windows. And also, again. The biggest problem that I have found with its counterintuitiveness of its interface is there's no easy way of switching windows. And you'd think that can't possibly be true. Well, if you look at, the, uh, at my Unity bar, right, I've got my installed programs here. Which is about two, two height of the screen's worth, right? Which would be about as, uh, as many as I'd imagine most people uh, would have. Really, you know, that maybe yeah, about that, right? That those are the most commonly used programs. Now, first of all, that's not the easiest way to scroll up and down because you know you can you you can miss, you can skew off. Um, but regardless of that, it's uh, it's, it's it is. It's just it, it, well, which windows are open? Okay, well that one's coloured in, so that's probably open, right? That's my sound. That's my sound. Yeah, so that would be open. Great. So if I go, you know, if I, if I click on you, I've lost it again. You know, it's it's all like again. I, you know, I've lost um, I've lost all my windows behind my two maximized ones. Um, so then, you know, maybe you know. So, so I guess Alt and Tab is the best way of doing it. You know, I've got Steam open. You'd never know it, would you? Uh, and I like the idea of using large amounts of real screen real estate. That's a good idea, but that means you do have to take your interface like more seriously than that. So. Um, Basically, uh, to sort of sum up my first impressions of uh, Ubuntu and Unity is there are some great things about it. I'm going to be sticking with it. I'm even going to be sticking with Unity for the next... I want to say the next week. I have I, I, I can see myself giving up on it before then to see if that, uh, my attitude towards it changes, to see if I can become more comfortable with it and to see if it does become more intuitive maybe i might realize that it's it is a much more keyboard driven desktop environment and maybe um you know maybe i've been thinking through the mouse for too long and maybe i've got to break some habits to make it really that user friendly or whatever maybe i might you know maybe i might realize that it is designed for a one screen keyboard mouse with a mouse wheel setup and nothing else uh, and anything else, well, you're better off just, you know, trying to find something else that works for you. I like Ubuntu as a structure. I like it as a philosophy, and I like the idea that it's an attempt to move into the mainstream. But I am a power user. I am not uh, a mainstream user. And I'm imagining, if you're watching this video, at least this far into this video, you are, you are too a power user. So, um, again, um, you know, I you know, I'd like to see 
more corporate available, you know, you know, more commercially available software. And I'd like to see more choice. And when I say choice, I don't mean, uh, you know, open source project A or open source project B. I mean, you can have open source project A, open source project B. You can have various amount, you know, various numbers of uh, commercially available software. Uh, you can have perhaps something that operates on the cloud, you know, like choice. That's what open source is all about. And if your choice is open source or open source, it's not a choice if we're completely honest here. So anyway, um, I do like that Ubuntu does aim to diversify its audience. Uh, and I do like that it's, um, it's, it takes the money side of things seriously. And you can see that through some of the polish in its system in, in, and in some of the ways that it does things as well. I also like that there's commercially available support. If I run a business that relies on computers being up, um, there isn't that available for so many Linux distributions, namely Linux Mint. But if I have to pay a couple hundred quid a year, and, and that means that someone can, can just talk me through fixing a system, or it means that someone can, you know, you know, can help me who is like accountable to help me, that's great. And that is available on Ubuntu as well. And, uh, it may, you know, uh, that's, uh, you know, money is important when developing software projects. Ubuntu be bears this in mind and it's the stronger distribution for it. That being said, Linux Mint certainly has its place and it is more user friendly than Ubuntu at this stage. I am hoping that Ubuntu might, you know, catch up. There's not much in it. So anyway, guys, thank you very, 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 very much for watching. That's been my first impressions of Ubuntu and more specifically Unity. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.